Did you or a loved one manage to pick up one of these hot ticket holiday items this last season? Remember how expensive they were and how hard they were to get? Now imagine how hard it would be to get it a second time. I live in Texas where our electrical grid is held together with baling wire and chewing gum, so I'm always concerned about what happens when I plug one of these into a wall. Well, APC has come up with a battery backup system specifically for gamers. What makes it different than a standard battery backup system? Let's unbox it and find out. I'm Ron Burke, Editor-in-Chief for GamingTrend.com. Let's roll. So before we do anything else, we need to prep the battery for use. So we're going to put this on its side. This thing is very heavy. There are two push points here on the case. When you push on this, this case will free like so. You can slide it all the way off. There are two straps here that say pull up, which is what we're going to do to get the battery loose. There we go. And from there, we can connect the red lead to the red tab, which you can see right there. So I'm gonna do that. I'm not gonna do it on camera because I wanna do it safely. Or at least I'm not gonna do it where you can see. With the cable in place, we're gonna slide the door back in. Make sure it's nice and tight. Sealed on both sides, which it is. And that's it. Most important part, of course, Now it's ready for use. So let's plug it in, we'll charge it, and we'll be right back. We left the battery power overnight, and it's a good thing because, well, you might be able to hear it outside. The wind is whipping, and it's gonna get well below freezing here in Texas, so there's a very good chance that our power will at least flicker, if not shut off completely. Again, this is where this comes in handy. Before we get started, I wanna point out something very special about this particular unit that I've not seen on any other UPS. This LED back here, it's such a simple thing. This changes colors, hence the tie-in for gaming. RGB makes it faster, right? So this simple LED illuminates all of your ports behind the device. So when you've got this behind your entertainment center, you don't have to climb back there with a flashlight or your phone or some other device so you can just see your ports to plug things in. Also, having spent most of my life in data centers, there's something else you should pick up that does not come with this, this. So this simple extension plug here plugs into the back of the device, or any plug really, and it moves the plug further away from this. So this is handy for devices like this, where it's flat and it would otherwise cause an obstruction on the back. You can simply plug it into this plug and it stays away from the back of the device. For power connections, you have a number of them on each side. So here you have five that say battery and surge, and then this one is also battery backup and surge. These ones are just surge. So in the event of a power uh, issue, all of these ports and this one will carry a battery backup. So that's useful for things like a game console, your TV, your receiver, things that you don't want to suddenly power off, maybe lose your save game or lose the ability to save and quit. So uh, that's where you're gonna plug those devices, especially like a computer. These ports are for things like a scanner, things that don't necessarily require a battery backup that you could have go offline for a moment and it really doesn't make any difference. Uh, you, you know, your phone charger could be another example of things that could plug into this and be protected at all times, but you really don't need to worry about whether it goes offline. There's two other items on the back of this that you should be aware of. This first screw right here is a ground screw. So if you have daisy chained multiple uh, surge suppressors, you would ground them between them using this. Or if you just wanted to run a secondary ground lead, that's where that would go. The last thing is right here is a uh, circuit breaker. In the event of an overload event, that circuit breaker will pop out and that's where you would simply reset it. So without further ado, let's power in some things, put some load on this and see how it reacts. I don't recommend running the uh, APC this way, but for demonstration purposes, we're going to do exactly that. So we're going to power up the Nintendo Switch and see what sort of load that puts on the device. Probably almost nothing. So yeah, 0%. 
Um, this device is mostly charged, so it really is not pulling that much power as it is. We're gonna fire up a game though and see if that makes any difference. Yeah, nothing. The Nintendo Switch is a fairly low power device, so that's not a big surprise. So now let's put some heat on it. Let's fire up the Xbox Series X. So it looks like we've got a 12%, 15% load on boot. Obviously when we're gaming, that's gonna also ramp it up, but uh, 15%, not that much. And now that it's idle, we're back to 0%. It's really not putting a lot of strain on it. Um, on boot is where the system's gonna probably draw the most power because there's no power regulation during boot. So that's when we're probably gonna see the highest load. Let's add the PlayStation to the mix. Twenty-two percent. Still not a great deal of power being drawn, and we're already back to zero. So this supports. Why are you interrupting me? This supports fifteen hundred watts of power. Now think about the system that we just built the other day. That system requires 850 watts of power. I actually tried a 750 watt power supply and it would not boot. So 850 is the minimum for what will run that system. 850 watts for a computer. I'll look up the values and display them kind of over here for the other devices that we've plugged in. Boy, that disc certainly makes a lot of racket, doesn't it? But it's not much. As I was saying, it's not much. So you've also got things to think about like a TV. Uh, a 4K television is going to cost you far less than you might expect. It's about 80 watts power draw for a 4K TV. Your receiver for a single channel is about 170 watts for like a Denon. Every channel that you add, so you know you have a 5.1 surround sound system for example, you're adding channels. So a single channel is about 170, and each channel after that is another 70. You add a powered subwoofer, you can see how this starts to add up. Most of the power supply uh, battery backups that I've seen are 1,000 watts or less. Think about the devices that you've just plugged in, and think about how fast that adds up. You don't want to run these things at max power, so having a little bit of headroom is important. Now, I'm going to surprise you for a second. I just moved all of the devices that are powering this chute right now, and they're all being run off of this APC. So the real test is what happens when you have a power event. I'm gonna go create a power event. Be right back. So everything that I'm using, the camera, the lighting, my microphone, all of it is being powered off the APC as well as our consoles. So when we bring this up, you can see we're still really only taxing this at 2%, not much. I've got one, two, three, four lights. It's telling me that it's running on battery backup a boom mic, my camera, a monitor that I consistently look at over here if you're wondering what I was looking at. And again, we're still only talking 2% load. This thing has plenty of overhead for just about anything that you're gonna plug into it. So now, let's see how long it'll run. Hitting the function button up top, we can see that we have That's what I was looking for. 47, thank you. 47 minutes of battery backup left. That's plenty of time to save my game, maybe even hit the next save point. So more than enough time with all of these devices and all of my production equipment running at the same time, all off of battery backup. So how much is that worth to you? Well, this device has a $350,000 warranty against any device that's plugged into it. So. In the event of an issue where this device allows power to pass through and damage one of your devices, APC will cover it 
for up to two, I'm sorry, $350,000. It also carries a three year warranty. So should anything happen to the battery or the device itself, you're fully covered. So the only remaining question is, how much is it going to cost? The Backups Pro Gaming UPS is gonna set you back $259. Now to put that in perspective, that's less than half of either one of these and far less than the cost of a new GPU. For me, that's worth the price of peace of mind. I'm Ron Burke, Editor-in-Chief for GamingTrend.com, saying protect your devices, especially given how hard they are to get nowadays. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you again very soon.